All right, chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. It's an AD 606. Uh, I'm not familiar with this part. So I'm on eBay or something like that. Yeah, I bought this off of eBay, I think. 50 megahertz, 80 dB demodulating logarithmic amplifier with limiter output. Pretty strange part. But on eBay, you get these modules. Uh, so it has the chip, it has a five volt regulator, so you input more than seven volts. Um, and you put the RF in and you get a voltage proportional to the power level on this pin. And uh, not quite sure about the other pin yet. Um, so let's take a look at the block diagram. The, well, let's read some of the features first. Let's see here. Minus 75 dBm to plus 5 dBm dynamic range. That's a lot. Input noise. Usable to 50 megahertz. Uh, low power, 5 volt part. Uh, usable ultrasound. Power measurements and stuff. Oh, power measurements. Yeah, I was thinking about when I got this thing, I was thinking about how it could be a power measurement device. Here's the block diagram now. It's got all these logarithmic stepwise amplifier thing in it. Um, and then it has a filter at the bottom, has a Salon key filter to smooth things out, has some uh, detectors here to measure the amount of power you got. And uh, yeah. Let's hook this thing up and uh, see what kind of voltages we get out of it. All right, I'm going to be using this piece of test equipment. It's perfect for this job. Um, I can set the frequency here. I'll set it to 25 megahertz. This has a really nice attenuator. It goes from uh, plus 20 dBm to minus 110 dBm. So it's got a really big attenuator in it. Um, and so we will uh, change the attenuation by 10 dB. And uh, I will be monitoring the voltage up there. You can see it. You can see it dropping here. I have it set to small number of digits, so it makes it easier for me to write it down. Uh, and I don't need that much accuracy for this thing. That's plenty. That's plenty enough accuracy. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get out some paper. I will start at plus ten. I think the the chip's only good to plus four, but might as well start at plus 10 to see, see if we can see the nonlinearity at the at the beginning here. So we'll start at plus 10 and we get uh, 3.70 volts, zero. We get 3.34. All right, there we go. I went all the way down to minus 100 dBm and uh, seemed to start being nonlinear down around that range. So this thing has a great dynamic range. I think it's supposed to have 90 dB of dynamic range. So uh, let me go ahead and take the uh, take the numbers that I wrote down. I'll type them into uh, Excel and make a make a graph and uh, let's see what this thing does. All right, uh, here is my graph. So it's pretty linear over a long range. Um, you can see it's pretty these are pretty linear here. There seems to be a little bit of nonlinear down here at the bottom. Uh, but this is plus 10 to minus 70. And it's plotting in a nice straight line. At least to minus 60. Yeah, plus 10 to minus 60 is definitely in a straight line. Minus 70 is a little low. Minus 80. Now what, what great dynamic range. And then you can see it fall off here at the bottom. Um, I believe there is a way to calibrate this a bit uh, in the in the data sheet. Let me see if I can if I can quickly find that. Uh, so here it shows optional slope and intercept adjustability. I don't know if that would help any in this particular case or not. You would just do that in software these days, though. Um, but um, yeah, you could calibrate this thing better, but there's a slope adjustment and an intercept adjustment. Uh, plus or minus 5 dB, plus or minus 10%. So I, I don't think that helps any. I think it, it would just move what you already have around, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't help that kink right there. Um, but uh, yeah, let me zoom back out again. I'm pretty impressed with this thing for the, uh, for the dynamic range it has. Well, I was about to question my sanity. Um, 
This obviously has an input. These two pins here are differential input. It goes all the way through this thing and then there's a differential output. And it says it's a logarithmic amplifier. So it should like amplify, <laughs> right? And there should be something on the output. And there's a connector. There's a, an input connector and there's an output connector. It says RF out, RF in, RF out. And I couldn't get any RF out to out. It just wouldn't out. Um, and I went around and around and around and around and uh, looked at this diagram here, which is a test setup for characterization. And they show that there's two resistors to plus five volts on the output. And then the output just kind of comes out. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. And then uh, I was reading, sometimes you have to read, pain in the butt. Um, it says, let's see here, logarithmic, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Right here. The output provides a hard limited signal output as a differential current of plus or minus 1.2 milliamps from open collector outputs. Open collector outputs. Ah, right? So now it makes sense. So if you look at this thing here, if it's open collector, you need pull-ups on the opens. So there's a 200 ohms on that one, there's a 200 ohms on that one, and it's differential. So it doesn't really matter if you pick up the signal on that side or you pick up the signal on that side, it should still, it should still work, right? And you might think if you only have one of these, it's differential. So one's still gonna, one side's still gonna toggle, right? And uh, if you take a look at how this board is wired, this is how it's wired. Uh, these are the two differential outputs. It's got five volts with a little capacitor and it's 100, instead of 200 ohms, it's got 180 ohms and they, they pull the output there. So you think, okay, it, this side here it might be toggling, but you don't really care. You don't need to pull up over there. Well, you do, <laughs> you do. Um, so let me show you what I did to the circuit. Uh, I added this. I added a, well, it's got to be, I added a 200, I had, had a 220. I added a 220 resistor on this side. And guess what? That side started whacking up and down again. Um, Never whacked up and down before, but now it does. So that was missing. I'll show a picture here. I put a little resistor in there and a little wire and we get a beautiful output now. Yay. And I can change the frequency. And uh, let me show you this all on one camera shot here. It'll make more sense. All right, so I can change the frequency. We see it changing over there. Now they're really, I'll put it back to 25 megahertz. The really interesting thing is the output level. Right now it's zero dBm, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40 dBm. And look at the output. The output is leveled and constant. So it's doing the logarithmic thing and it has a self-leveling circuit. I think you can kind of see it in here on the diagram. It's got this feedback path here where it, it, it makes sure that that whole loop is leveled. Um, and so no matter what power level you have a set to, plus 10, minus 30, minus 40, the output is always exactly the same, which is what you want if you're just making a counter or doing something like that. Go to minus 50, minus 60, minus 70. Now we're starting to get some jitter. So let me go over there. Let me move the camera. Okay, so here's at minus 50, and everything looks fairly stable here. If you do a single shot, you can see that everything's just going up and down. Here's minus 60 dBm. Minus 60, it looks fine. Let me go to minus 70, and minus 70 is looking fine. But if you do a run, you notice that it's a jiggly. Um, so this is a great uh, time to use a trick that I told you about which is a hold off. We're going to use hold off. We're going to set, let's say 200. Let's see here. No, I don't want 200. 
uh, let's say 100, oops, 100 milliseconds. So now um, my screen's going to only update, it's going to update 10 times a second, right? And I can, you can see that every once in a while there's some little jaggies in here. Maybe that was a little, maybe that was, let's do 300, 300 milliseconds. And we can just kind of wait. You see, see there's an extra pulse in there once in a while. And uh, so at minus 70 dBm, you get kind of a flaky, a flaky output. Here's minus 60, D, minus 60 dBm, and you can see it's very, very stable. So even though it might vary a bit, you're not getting those extra runt pulses or whatever you want to call them here at minus 70. Here's Here's minus 80. Minus 80 is just, it don't work. Here's minus 70. So it's, it's a noise thing, right? There's just noise. And every once in a while, you'll get a funny, you'll get a funny count. And so if you do buy one of these things, check yours to see if it's not wired correctly. And uh, add that uh, 220 ohm resistor to the uh, pin 8 here. And yeah, yours will work too. Okay, that was Chip of the Day in AD 606.